the Indiana Pacers win, that means that they will be playing the Washington Wizards, who lost last night to the Boston Celtics 118 to 100. Uh, Matt, like Shea Lambert, that's mm-hmm. great news for you. You've locked up that, uh, that playoff spot. The Celtics will be playing the Nets. It's not the KD Russ matchup that I think everybody wanted to see. But I think it's going to be interesting. Uh, what did you see from, from the game from your side? It was a bit of an interesting game for me because I've obviously had the Wizards all season, so it was sad to see them lose. And I really do hope they go and beat the Pacers because the work that they've put in since um, the, uh, the All-Star break game, they've really put, put a lot of work in to try and get into the playoffs. So I definitely think they deserve um, to get that final eighth seed and progress to the playoffs. From the game itself, um, it was a really tight first half, really. They were toing and throwing. Um, but what I really noticed that the difference was in the second half was that the Celtics stopped the Wizards getting into the paint. Now, the Wizards led the league in free throws, and they, were, they also led the lead in two points, uh, two point field goals as well. And from that game itself, especially in the first half, they were pushing that. And that was probably why the Wizards actually led at half time. And then in the second half, that completely changed. And then the Celtics went on that run. The Wizards didn't really score that too, too much. And then just from looking at the stats, and I think this really stands out, for the Wizards who lead the league in free throws, they only went to the line 20 times in the whole match. Whereas Jason Tatum himself went to the line 17 times. That makes a massive difference. And especially... If the I think it was like the the Celtics ended up making twelve having twelve more free throw attempts like that's a huge difference when you're getting beat by eighteen points like that's that could get you right back in the game if if you're making that same amount of free throws which the Wizards are expected to do. Another thing I picked out in that Celtics game is in the third quarter uh, there was a lot of blown coverage by the Wizards. Uh, Kemba got open for a couple of threes from the double team attention that Tatum drawn. In the next play down, you saw a high pick and roll between Kemba and Tatum. And Tatum literally slipped the screen, open corner three. Uh, and then from then on, Celtics were able to use their weapons. Uh, you had Evan Fournier in the starting lineup, which the, uh, which the Celtics have obviously been trialing. Um, but the Wizards, three for 21 from three. 14%, that's a season low. Bill has uh, 22 points on 25 shots, shooting two three throws not really um, trying to get those calls, putting the pressure on the, on the refs. Uh, and yeah, Tatum made as many free throws as the whole Wizards team. Uh, and in fact, Tatum and Kemba outscored the Wizards 49 to 46 in the second half. Nuts. Tatum obviously had a 50 piece. This is another thing we haven't talked about. But yeah. Does anybody else have any thoughts about the game? I mean, Davis Batans. I considered putting him in my fantasy team and he just hasn't been it all year. He's a good one of eight, oh, seven from behind, behind, behind the line. Matt, you make an excellent point about them not really doing much from two point range. I think it's probably a case of the Celtics going, go on, we dare you to shoot at this point, jack it up, see where it gets you because no one shot very well at all. Um, such a shame. Um, but yeah, I really would have. I, I genuinely thought going into that the Wizards were going to win, and the Celtics showed um, showed that they they kind of when push comes to shove, they've got the pieces to do it. Kemba can come up big, um, and so can Tame. Obviously, um, one player who I didn't think played very well um, was Evan Fournier, and you know he goes three of eleven, um, two of six from behind the line isn't too bad. But he did the other stuff, six rebounds, four assists and a steal as well. So, you know, on any given night, Ed, you know as well as the rest of us that he can get you 20. So, um, yeah, it was, uh, it was an interesting game. Maybe they can, maybe they can steal, steal one, or, one or two from the Nets in the next round. A couple of things on the two European boys you just mentioned. Firstly, Davis Bertans, special place in my heart. I picked him up last year in fantasy pretty early on. Did absolute wonders. Absolute wonders for me. I would have won last year if it wasn't for, you know, the pandemic. But, you know, we won't get into that. <laughs> Secondly, um, on Fournier, uh, I'll talk about his playoff performances. So, last two years, obviously, we made the playoffs. And M. Fournier really disappointed them both. He was unable to get... The, 
Overall, in the first year, AG was the only one who performed better than he did in the regular season, and Jonathan Isaac did as well, but he got injured. Second year, Vooch was the only one to really perform better than he did in the regular season. Aside from that, the rest of the team was super, super disappointing, Fournier being one of them. So in terms of player history, I don't think he, the past years, he's been really disappointed. I think that's something that weighs on his conscious. On his conscious, sorry. Um, now, I, I was talking to you guys just before we started recording how I was surprised that Fournier plays small forward because he always played shooting guard for Orlando. Um, I feel that's it, that is his best position because he can fend better at that size. He's a pretty good, I feel he's a pretty good defender for his size because, because of he's quite smart and he's a bit bigger than most two guards anyway. Seeing that small forward, I was like, oh, gosh, I don't, I don't think that's the best matchup for him. I can't remember who do Wizards have at the small forward position or in the forwards positions. Rui, Rui Hachimura. That feels like a massive size disadvantage, um, which, again, I don't I didn't watch the game. Who, who, have, they started, got, who so, have they got next round as well? Who have they got next round? KD. I think they might put Tatum on KD and... Um, they put him on Harden, which is still, which is still, still a, on Harden, still a And then Marcus Smart will be on Kyrie. <laughs> yeah. And which will mean Kemba. Where would Kemba be? Oh, uh, hi- hiding on Joe Harris. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that'd be super fun. Joe Harris versus... Uh... Anyway, but yeah. Uh... Oh, on Evan Fournier. Yes, he does have... His role in Orlando is probably different to where he is in, in Boston. He's probably in Boston the third option. In Orlando, he's probably the second option. So maybe that might suit him better being a, a tertiary scorer. But it didn't look promising from just from purely box. I didn't get a chance to watch the game, but purely from box ball's perspective, it didn't look too good. I mean, one thing I will say, like you mentioned, Evan Fournier playing minutes at the three. That's because obviously they've got injuries. And also, I think we saw a bit of playoff rotation creeping in here. Um, Kemba, 34 minutes. Smart, 34. Tatum, 40 minutes. Fournier, 36. Thompson, 30. And that was only because Robert Williams went down um, and, and couldn't play extra minutes. So you see a lot of guys like Ojale who'd, who'd be getting, you know, double digit minutes. It didn't happen. Luke Cornette had four minutes. Like they're, they're just shortening up that rotation to see if they can get eight guys that gel before they meet the, meet the juggernaut that is the Nets. Let's close it out with one word answers. Uh, the paces go up against the Wizards. Who do we have, guys? Who's taking the eighth spot? Who's meeting for me, Philly? For, for me, it's it's the Pacers. They've shown they want it. They absolutely want it. And I think it will... It's not going to be a blowout like like these last two were. I think it will be close. But I think ultimately, as a as if, as a unit of... Five, they can put out five guys that are, that are better together. My heart says the Wizards. My head says the Pacers. That's so it. So your and answer the, is? So my, my, my answer is the Pacers, but I really want it to be the Wizards. Hopefully, hopefully. Um, I think it's just the fact that Beal is pr- a week or two's time. I think just because he's come back from his injury, you could see in the other game against the Hornets that, because that was effectively a playing game as well, really, let's be honest, in the way that they were fighting for that um, eighth seed. I think it's probably just too much just playing those effectively three playing games, such intense, important games for the Wizards. And that Hornets game was a close game as well. They did well to come back and win that. And it's, I think it might just be too much just for Bradley Beal to have his full effects too soon after his injury. No, you said one word, Alex, but fuck you. Um, yeah, I, I, hate, I hate to be three or three, but, uh, but I would say the paces. And part of it is I don't think... They've got anyone, uh, Wizards have got anyone that can really match up with Sabonis and really have a paint presence. However, I am worried if I was the Pacers, that paint is going to be attacked by Russell Westbrook and Sabonis. I don't feel he's the best rim protector or best defensive presence because he will be playing a majority of minutes at centre. So that is a bit I am worried about. I reckon the Wizards could go to the line a lot against the Pacers. I am disagreeing with you and I'm going with... Wizards. Uh, they've, they've, they've had a massive stretch towards the end of the year and it would be such a waste for them yeah. to go out like this. So I, I think Russ gets them in there. Russ and Bill is like, guys, there's yeah, nothing but... to lose here. Um, I Ru- think they're going to pull it out. Russ could win them while losing the game. Yeah. 
You can say that. You can say that. Unlike another couple of things I saw, so um, Russ on a putback dunk. Oh, put, yeah, he gets put back and he fouls. And then he absolutely clatters Alex Len in the face. Like both arms smacks him in the face and acts like he's not even there. Like he just doesn't care. Another one, Davis Batans went down and he's just lying on the floor. And Beal's like, fuck that man. And just shoots a three. Like yeah. they, it's like they don't care about the rest of their team. And I think that could backfire um, a little bit as well. But. I, I think that I think that's subjective. Um, I'm going with the Wizards. I think you're picking out uh, wrong things. You've got to remember, Mr. Bray, uh, a Pacers player told the coach to s- sit down. So let's be real here, okay? But we'll see what happens. Um, me and the me and the guys will be back uh, soon with another matchup. We've obviously got Grizz Spurs, Lakers, Warriors. Maybe maybe we talk about it at a later date. But um, we will definitely be reactive to more stuff. So yeah. Thank you guys for the uh, the brief update um, on, from the sixth man and uh, the rest of the gyms that are here. Uh, it's over and out. See you later. Peace.